Greetings from beautiful Uganda, the Pearl of Africa. Yeah, in a few days, we are celebrating Christmas. And you know, when you ask people, what is Christmas for you? What does it mean to you? Many say, well, good food, visit the relatives, drive into the village, presents. But this is not Christmas. Christmas is the day when God entered this world with his son, Jesus Christ. And he was born in Bethlehem. And you know where he was born? Jesus was born in the stable where they, where, where the, 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 what, what, the, the lambs were born that were slaughtered uh, at, um, at Easter, at Passover. And where they were born and slaughtered, Jesus was born. Already with his birth, we got the big revelation. Jesus came to die for our sins so that we could live. And, uh, and you know, Christmas is the turnaround of this whole universe. Before, nobody could enter heaven because nobody could make themselves righteous enough to, uh, to be sinless, totally sinless. But when Christ came to live on earth a totally holy life, Jesus didn't commit one sin. And he even took the sin of Adam and Eve upon himself and all the sins of the world. And he came to die so that you and I can live. And dear ones, this is to me the greatest, uh, the greatest love that God has shown to the world, to send his son into this wicked world. When I look right now, the little bit I get through the WhatsApp news, what is going on in the world, you could cry with what we have made out of the world, with how we relate to each other in many nations, wars everywhere, fighting and uh, evil. And I mean, it's just unbelievable. If we knew all the things that are happening in darkness with children, we would all cry with pain. But God has never given up yet. He sent his son to pay the price to become the bridegroom for the bride, for you and me. So dear ones, we, we, through, the, through the coming of Jesus, his life and his death on the cross, we receive a brand new identity in God. And we, for example, we are, we are the masterpiece of God. You know, in Ephesians 2.10, we, we read that we are made in his image. And, and we are made to represent the king of kings on earth. We are made to make the heaven come down on earth. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We are called to be the representatives of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. You are, we are called to be ambassadors of the kingdom of God. Dear ones, there's no higher position in this world than to be an ambassador of the kingdom of God. So I trust that you all really have a Christmas that is meaningful. That's not just a little material fun, but that is meaningful where you open your heart and you receive Jesus Christ into your heart and you allow him to be your life, to be your Lord, to be your faith, to, to be your, your wisdom, to be your, your holiness, to be your joy, to be your peace, to be your everything. I promise you, you will experience a dimension of life that is beyond all that is happening on this earth. You know, even in this corrupt world right now and in this confused world, if we keep our eyes on Jesus, we will radiate with joy. And that's what I would like to advise you. Don't look at the circumstances. Don't look at the problems. Look at Jesus Christ, the initiator and finisher of our faith, for whom nothing is impossible. And I want to read here a very encouraging word that I received. It says, 
Don't let the problems of this world steal your joy. Because of the demands of this world and the constant changes we go through, both economically and emotionally, we cannot avoid being stressed. When we are stressed, we find ourselves easily irritated by the smallest problems. Anger levels rise, which causes us to even snap at people who we love. Though we cannot avoid things that, causes, that cause stress, we must be aware that stress is the main reason why we lose our joy. Because God is aware of the difficulty to overcome stress in this life. He has instructed us numerous times, over 350 times, he says, do not fear, but be joyful. Especially Philippians 4.4, 4. when you believe the promise, uh, sorry, 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 the promises, you will realize that you are unconditionally loved and valued by God. If the creator of the universe loves you, no problem or, uh, or stress can steal your joy because the joy of the Lord is the source of strength which makes you stay joyful. Read Nehemiah 8, 10. Dear ones, it is the biggest celebration. You know, all the angels rejoiced when Jesus was born in Bethlehem. And, uh, and a new dimension of reality started with Christ coming to this earth, redeeming this earth and giving us an open door to heaven. And so I pray that you all receive Christ in full love, in full confidence into your life and allow him to live with you, to grow with you, and to, well, to just be the center of your life. God wants us to have a, an absolute exclusive relationship with him. God is not happy if you just go to church and the rest of the, your life you run yourself. He wants to be chikumi ku chikumi connected with you, which means 100%. Day and night, he wants to be your very life. And so I advise you, dear ones, to listen to the, to the YouTubes that we, have, that we are adding to this, to this message of mine. A very dear African brother has prophetically analyzed Christmas and what it really means and how it was prophetically pro uh, told us, you know, just like prophetically we know that Jesus Christ is coming back and I trust it will be very soon. And I can't wait for him to come back and to take us into glory. But dear ones, in the meantime, accept him into your life. Allow him to grow in you so the world can see him. Allow him to be the center of your life, to be the hope of glory in your life, to be the solution to all issues in your life. And I promise you, the devil is creative in trying to destroy our joy. But if you keep your eyes on Jesus, if you keep your eyes on him, you, you will radiate with joy and the problems will shrink. Tell your, your problems how, God your big, your, how big your God is and you will see how your problems will shrink. I pray now that you all wherever you are, have a very, very blessed time of reunion, of new encounter with Jesus Christ, and that you allow him to enter every part of your life, from the first, even from your conception, even from your, your ancestor lines. He wants to completely connect you with himself. So allow him to penetrate your heart, to penetrate your life, and see what a change it makes to belong to Jesus, not to belong to a church, to belong to Jesus Christ, the initiator and finisher of our faith. Thank you so much for all that you are doing, because we have many, many wonderful staff in Mission for Africa. We have also many, many people that pray for us in Uganda and that have been a great support to this ministry. So we bless you, we encourage you, we strengthen you with the word, Jesus loves you. And you are the best that
that he ever created because you are a, a fantastic original. Nobody can compare you with anybody else. You are the only one that God put of this beauty in this world. And he has a plan for you that if he told you right now, you would not believe it. It's far beyond what you can imagine. And that's not a time to grow into our calling, to grow into the purpose of our being here. And that's our prayer for this year, that in your life, in our lives, his kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We bless you, we love you, and we thank you. Shalom, shalom.